Here we are, I know I don't make videos very often, but today I figured I would do a teardown of the new um, Goal Zero Torch 500. I'm probably the first one to do this, so I figured I would get it done, get the information out there, uh, and that's about it. So it's a pretty cool light overall. I've had it for a few days now and I really like it. It's got uh, three modes for each light, and that's kind of handy because sometimes you don't want it to be real bright uh, or you want it to be really bright with less runtime. So overall, it's pretty cool. Uh, now, I didn't really want to tear down my good ones, so I actually went and I bought two of them. I got the boxes right here, so I went and bought two of them. Um, even though I learned that it's pretty non-destructive to tear it down, actually, so I have my torn down one here, and it's a very simple uh, process, which I really like, and it's non-destructive, unlike other Goal Zero products I've taken apart. So it's really easy and you can put it back together and it'll still work. So what happens is uh, on the back where the charging port is, there are five small screws that use what looks like just a normal bit. Uh, it's kind of small, but it's just like a normal uh, tri-wing or, or not tri-wing, but like a star bit possibly or a hex bit. So they come right out and then this little face plate pops off, which is what has the two little hooks on it. So then that comes off, which then leaves you with like this sticking out of the end of the metal tube, just like this. And then you undo four screws, which are Phillips. They're just standard Phillips screws. And so then once those four come out, you just grab onto this green rubber and you just pull on it. And then this whole tray just slides out of here, which makes it really easy. Uh, there are a couple wires you have to disconnect, which are the solar panel and then there's a temperature sensor right behind the solar panel, which just makes it so that it knows the temperature of the body of the flashlight. And it also has another temperature sensor that goes to the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom down in on this just so we can get a little better look at it and hope that the camera doesn't overexpose it. Yeah, it looks like it wants to overexpose it a little bit. So we'll just kinda do that. So. I'll just kind of go through uh, what I see here. So right here's the battery. It looks like two 18650s wrapped inside a commercial like pouch battery kind of. It's soldered on so you can't unplug it, which kind of, I don't know. I guess if you want to replace the batteries, you just have to unsolder them and put in a couple new 18650s. Um, I'm guessing, yeah, they're in, they're in parallel. So they make 3.6 volts and it looks like they have their own protection board under there. So it isn't just relying on this, which is good because, you know, the more protection you have, the better. So I like that. Uh, as you can see though, there is a little wasted space up here. Makes you wonder if they couldn't have used some other batteries. Now I know 18650s are just super standard and cheap, so it makes it easy. But I wonder if they couldn't have used this extra space or just made the flashlight a little longer so that they could have four 18650s instead of two, or if they could have shrunk this circuitry down so they could have fit two more 18650s. That would have been pretty cool uh, instead of just having this open space. Uh, I guess you could store something in there if you were ambitious to take your flashlight apart each time to get to it, I don't know. Um, but it has a decent capacity. It's labeled as 5,200 milliamps, which if you look on the box, it says it's rated for 5,200 milliamps. So they're not trying to pull the capacity up anymore um, than, than it is, so that's good, they're being honest, uh, which I like. Um, and then all that's mounted to just a plastic tray, which is inside the metal tube. So it's obviously heavy enough as it is. It's, you know, it's really nice and weighty in the hand. So they didn't really need more metal, um, but it would have been nice if they would have made this out of metal because then it would have had some heat sinking for the cob on the back. I don't really know what the deal is, if it's gonna overheat when you're on high power mode or not. Uh, cause it's just, it's on plastic the whole time. This LED up front, which is the spotlight has a little bit of heat sinking, uh, to it. If you turn it on like that, you can see that, you know, it's pretty bright, so it must need some heat sinking. Um, but overall it's a pretty cool design. So one thing I do like is that they use USB-C, but I do wish that it was an 18 watt port, not just a, you know, five volt in only. Uh, if you want to use this as a power bank, you have to plug in a USB-A cable, which kind of sucks. So I wish that that was just an 18 watt in and out 
so that you could get rid of USB-A altogether, but I guess that's a little ambitious, even though that's what they've done on other products. Uh, maybe we'll see that in the future, so I don't know. But uh, as for the board, we've got our solar panel, two temperature sensors, our two lights, and then our battery, and our button board and our charging board is mounted 90 degrees to this board, which has all the boost circuitry and protection circuitry on it. So it looks pretty simple, honestly. And it also looks like they have coated this board in a waterproof coating, which is good, you know, obviously, because this does have an IP67 waterproof rating. So that's pretty cool. I'm guessing the reason they're doing that is because this rubber seal is pushing up against the aluminum tube, which just kind of, you know, it probably provided decent waterproofness, but they coated that board just in case, you know, because sometimes things can be a little sketchy during manufacture. So I'm, uh, I'm glad they did that. As for getting this thing back together, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet because this little light guide or diffuser for the front light has to go on there in a certain way. And so I guess I'm just going to have to drop it down this tube until I get it right. But uh, I'll play that by ear. So it does still have a lens up here, even though this is the focusing lens. And that must be for the waterproofness, just to keep it from, uh, from getting water in it. And now that the thing's apart, these little rubber sides that say Torch 500 and stuff, they just slide right out. And then there's just a green sticker underneath to kind of make the dots look like they're uh, green like that. So you get in theory, just pull it back, take, take those off if you just wanted them to be like metal colored. So that's kind of cool. But uh, overall, I'd say it's a pretty well-designed light. It looks like... It looks like this solar panel is not going to slide out of there because the wires are run through a hole in the aluminum and then sealed up with uh, waterproofing epoxy. So I'm guessing that solar panel's glued in there too. Uh, as for the front, I don't even know how that comes off. It's probably glued on there, resined on there. So, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need to get that off to get to all the electronics, which is the cool part. Uh, I really like this, how it's just easy to work on, you know? So I'll put in some high res images probably uh, in editing, just so you can see it all. But it's super easy to take apart. That's the thing I love about it. You just take off this front piece with those five screws and then you do four more screws and the whole dang thing comes apart. So I'm gonna see if I can reassemble it here on camera. If not, I'll just edit it out because it seems like it may be kind of a pain. Yep, and that light guide did not go in there right. Let's see how many tries this takes. Probably gonna take too many, but we'll give it a shot. Wonder if I do it like this, maybe it'll go a little slower. Nope, that did not help at all. Now it's just upside down, rattling right around there. You'd think it'd be relatively easy, but... Ooh, ooh, it's close. Ooh, I got it. Ha! What are my odds of that? Hope I didn't get a bunch of dirt in the lens and stuff. Okay, that looks like it's in. So then what you do, I'm gonna do this upright because I don't really want to have to redo all of that, but I also wanna make sure it's on the camera. Okay, there, we're on the camera there. So what happens is you just take and you slide this tray in while making sure the wires are out of the way. It has little channels that these, uh, that they ride on like that. So then make sure wires are still out of the way. Battery is kind of thick, so it kind of wants to snag those wires, which makes me just a little nervous. We'll just do it. So then right about here is the point where I plug in the temperature sensor. Go in a little bit more, plug in the temperature sensor. So that's good. And then we'll snake the solar panel wire around and we'll plug that in. These are keyed connectors, so you don't have to really worry about getting it backwards. Um, and then now you can slide the whole thing shut like that. And then boom, the lens is captive in there now and the whole thing's back together. Now the battery's completely dead. I just drained it, so that's why it's not turning on, but um, I'm sure everything's good. So then now it's pretty easy. You just take a screwdriver and these four screws. Now these ones actually are going into aluminum. Um, the five on the outside are just going into plastic. So you just want to be kind of careful with these, make sure they're not cross-threading or you could have a real fun time getting this back together. 
but uh, make sure they're nice and tight so the water doesn't get in. That's the cool thing too I like about this is even once you've disassembled it, I feel like you haven't broken any of the water resistanceness because, is that a word? I don't know. Because, you know, it's just, it's not like you're breaking a seal that's irreparable or whatever. It's just, you know, just this rubber, which is, you know, nice and rubbery, at least at this point. These haven't been out very long, so maybe they'll get less rubbery as we go. I'm not sure. But overall, I really like the design. It's a lot more smaller than the Torch 250, which I have one of over there. Um, you know, it's a lot smaller and it has more light and bigger battery, I believe, and no hand crank. The hand crank, I never used the hand crank on the old torch, so I'm glad they got rid of it because I didn't use it. Not saying everybody didn't use it, I guess, but I never found a use for it, so I'm kind of glad it's gone. Uh, and I'm glad it's a lot smaller, too, for the same size solar panel because, you know, this is nice and compact. I can take it with me in my car. I can, you know, just do a lot of stuff with this. It's very versatile. So now we take this plastic frame, Put that on there, kind of snaps in a little bit. And then we'll put these five screws back in. Now I didn't have the right bit, so I actually am using a T5 Torx right now, um, which isn't right, but it fits. So I just kind of went with it. Now, because these are just trim screws, you want to be careful that they don't cross thread or you could strip it out pretty easy. So, and those don't provide any waterproofing. The water can get behind that trim piece all at once and it won't hurt anything. Make sure you don't over tighten them. I can't stress that enough. Plastic to plastic always is kind of tough. So that should be tight enough. I like how repairable it is. If the battery started to go to crap, you could probably take that pack apart, replace the two cells, and then, uh, you know, be back up and running. Or if you could find longer cells or different types of cells that would fill up the rest of that space, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe somebody in the future will do that, but there isn't typically a lot of mods that happen with Goal Zero stuff, so not too optimistic, but we'll keep our, our uh, imaginations open. Who knows, maybe I'll do it if I ever get the uh, the time. So there we go, they're back together. Pretty cool uh, little lights. I think they're totally worth it for 50 bucks to have the option to do solar or to do uh, you know USB-C in, which is great. You, know, you can charge it in your car, you can charge it anywhere, literally anywhere, so. It's super easy, it's uh, it's awesome, and it provides a ton of lighting options too. So that's about it for today. I uh, just figured I'd be the first one to probably get a teardown out of the new Torch 500. So that's it for today. We'll catch you in the next one.